You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Welcome back to Where You Live. And uh, we're broadcasting live from the Concierge Landscape Studios. Our guest today, if you're just joining us, is Rob Kina, who is a partner with the law firm of Helmuth & Johnson. We're talking about insurance claims and uh, what some of the, the rights a homeowner has when they dispute uh, the settlement uh, that they're receiving from the insurance company. We're, we've been uh, getting some uh, great uh, information uh, from Rob. Before we get back into the conversation, I just want to let our listeners know here in the second hour, we have uh, another uh, great resource for you. It is a newsletter. It comes out bi-monthly uh, at New Concepts. It's free for the asking. A lot of the articles that uh, the topics we cover in the newsletter uh, are covered on the uh, radio show, but sometimes in further detail. Uh, a lot of the folks that we have on the show are, uh, uh, give uh, special articles there, too, from time to time. So give us a call during the week at 952-922-2500. Ask for Courtney, and you can start receiving your uh, newsletter. And then I also want to just also mention, too, uh, Rob... Uh, Helmuth & Johnson has a great resource with a newsletter, too. How can they get a hold of that? Well, we have wrong? the Community Association newsletter. We have a real estate newsletter, construction law newsletter. Uh, if you want to sign up for any of those newsletter, newsletters, go to hjlawfirm.com. Okay. And, uh, again, if you want to be a, a part of the show, the number is 651-289-4488 with your question or comment. Hey, we should mention they can email you a question as well. Yes, they can. For those that are shy, you mm-hmm. can... Uh, you can uh, email us at uh, uh, gene, that's G-E-N-E, at N-C-M-G-I dot com, and we'd be happy to uh, read your comments or questions on air as well. Well, let's uh, go back to talking about this appraisal process, and uh, in the last segment, you were telling us about uh, a big case uh, recently. You said uh, QBE versus... Uh, what was the name of the Twin Homes of French Ridge Homeowners Association. That's a mouthful. Right. <laughs> uh, Tony's question was, uh, is matching covered? I think that's the shortest Yeah, how way likely to say. are you going to win right. that argument? Uh, I'm going to, I explain how that process of appraisal goes, where we present evidence to the, the three and the insurer uh, presents evidence to the three. We say it's a million dollar loss. They say it's a $20,000 loss. And then the, the appraisal panel decides. Well, in, in the Twin Homes case, the, the appraisal panel decided, you know what, you need all new product. Since it doesn't match, you have to do it. Well, the Court of Appeals issued a decision, and uh, lawyers, if there's lawyers listening out there, will tell you that in a, uh, uh, a published decision versus an unpublished decision or a published Court of Appeals decision versus a trial court op- opinion uh, it carries a lot of weight. This is this is the law of the land when it's a published case. Well, the fact of the matter is, is the this published decision stated that, and I'll, I'll read directly from it. The appraisal panel's determination that the value of loss to homeowners association for hail damage to roof was cost was cost total replacement of roof, rather than cost of repair or replace damaged shingles. This was within the scope of the appraisal panel's authority under the policy. Mm -hmm. So what that says is we have to split hairs a little bit. It it, it doesn't say that every time we have a matching claim, a matching is covered. But what it says instead is that the appraisal panel can rule on that question of matching. Because what the insurance companies were doing to us in the past is they were saying, sorry, the appraisal panel can't make that decision because it's a coverage decision. And it very often, instead of just a dollar decision, right, right. You and mentioned that earlier, and yeah. that was how they—that's how they walked out of an appraisal I was in once on the wow. Townhome Association. They said, "Sorry, Mr. Keeney, you're asking for a coverage decision. This is an appraisal you're here to set value." And I said, "No, I'm setting the value to the loss." And and frankly, I didn't have anything to back me up, but I mm-hmm. knew what it, the loss should be. And in mm-hmm. fact, the Court of Appeals made that decision. So now, what we do with a decision like this is we go to our appraisals and we say to the panel. By the way, panel, it is within your authority to decide that we need all new matching product. There's a new published case on it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that they have to decide that all the product needs to be replaced. It's not a decision that says that, but it says that the appraisal panel may make that decision. So it kind of opens it up for them to be able to feel uh, 
certain that that would be okay. To and do. it shuts down that defense that, no, this is a coverage decision. Right. You, you go yeah, away. That's right. And, and I talked about the formal process where someone hires a lawyer like me to go in and make a presentation. I have blow-ups of photos and all that. But this can be done without a lawyer for these smaller losses. Well, let me ask you that. How, how often uh, do these types of cases have an attorney with them as well versus without an attorney, would you say? Well, I can't say how often, but I can tell you that dollar-wise, I mean, I, the, the, you might spend seven to $10,000 on attorneys and engineers and, and, a, and a contested appraisal. So if a million two is at issue, it's worth it. Mm. But if there's $30,000 at issue or $20,000 at issue, you might want to have an attorney who's agreeing to do just very minimal work and make the presentation or no attorney at all. And the way you can do that is simply write a letter to the insurance company saying, under the rights of the policy, we hereby demand an appraisal as we disagree regarding the value of the loss. Now, if you write a letter saying, we think this should be covered, you've essentially opened the door for them to make yeah. that coverage. But so, oh. Sometimes people oh, shoot sure. themselves in the right. foot by saying too much. Right. Just be concise <laughs> yeah. and, allow the pro and allow you to get to the process. Right. Yeah. We, by saying, we disagree with you, insurer, regarding the valuation of this loss, you haven't stepped on your own foot, and yeah. then they can. They'll come forward and they'll say, and I think in that letter you should say, and our appraiser is Mr. or Mrs. X, and mm -hmm. they may be a, a roofing contractor, and they may be a lawyer or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the insurer will write a letter back saying, um, well, we name our appraiser as so-and-so. The two of those appraisers should get together and, and get a name and umpire. And you can stand in the backyard of the house and say, here's our bid. Here's our bid. This is what well, we think it will let's cost. Let's talk about that for a moment, the, the strategy behind uh, who, to, who to get or uh, whose information to use uh, for the appraisal? Can you talk well, about that? Well, experience counts. I mean, if, if you use a contractor who's a friend of yours, they're not going to understand the ins and outs as much as the, the person that the insurance company names. Because think about it. The insurance company is going to name someone with experience in this area because they're an insurance company. Well, you as a homeowner may have uh, one claim your entire life. The insurance company has thousands yeah. of claims, so they know they're going to go to someone who's sophisticated. So this isn't the time to enrich Bob's second cousin. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, on this one job. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, is, is you can go to a law firm like mine or a law firm that deals in property claim cases and ask the, the lawyers who deal in these cases for a recommendation. I, you, call me up and ask for a recommendation on a contractor, an appraiser, or yeah. an engineer. Yeah. It's not going to cost you money. I'm not yeah. going to charge for that. I'm going to say, here's who I use. Yeah. And, and you'll, even with a strategy, too, uh, talk to someone about getting several uh, bids, too. Well, in the appraisal process, I think you could certainly get three or four bids and, su and submit your highest bid a a as your argued amount of loss. They're certainly going to look at multiple bids, or you might ask for verbal bids and only have uh, the, you know, the, the, the bid that's the most complete in terms of scope of work and cost that be the one you submit. The fact of the matter is, is it's only in litigation um, that the typical full exchange of information called discovery takes place. But on the other hand, you don't want to withhold, falsely withhold information from an insurance company because it's, it, it, it won't serve your interest at all, and it, it's not the way to go. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, let's take uh, another break. Uh, when we come back, we've got a uh, couple more segments left in our show today. We want to talk uh, about uh, the uh, process. There's a couple things that um, you brought up. You, you did a great seminar for our uh, folks, uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago now. Uh, and, uh, folks, if you have a uh, property management firm, too, you want to have uh, talk to the folks at Helmuth & Johnson because they've done uh, some in-house uh, training which has just been a, a great source and a great resource for us as property managers, mm -hmm. too. We want to talk a little bit about some of the things that people don't normally think about uh, in this uh, uh, process, and that is uh, preserving evidence uh, before uh, things uh, take place. And we want to talk about uh, deadlines and timing and things of that nature, too. But we're going to take a break now. You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. We'll be back after this. 